There's five osprey now. There's three right here, one to the right, and one just went off to the left. Oh man, this is crazy. This is so awesome. Let's back things up a bit and set the stage for what would become an awesome day of bird photography. Sun River Resort in Bend, Oregon at Sony Condo 3.0. An annual Sony photography event for content creators. And this, this is what I like to call the library. Pretty much every Sony photography product in existence and it's just waiting to be played with. I had every intention on using this amazing 600mm f4 lens, but I've already used this lens at a prior event. I wanted to get my hands on the 200-600mm to lens and see what it was capable of. I immediately lose myself in a lush garden filled with vibrant flowers and fuzzy bees. Not exactly the perfect place to test out a long lens, but I'll never pass up an opportunity to stop and check out the smaller things. And speaking of smaller things, this baby nuthatch makes the perfect first subject for the 200 to 600 lens. And this lens does this cute little bird justice. Look at that little cutie. And of course, the adult isn't too far behind. There it is now, perched on top of an old snag. Let's see what else we can find back in those lush and vibrant flowers. Back into the maze of flowers, and I notice something tiny whiz right past me on the left and silently land in a tree above me. The wind has picked up significantly and it makes the leaves shimmer and shake like a group of tiny dancers. And sitting just to the right of this nature-filled dance party, a tiny hummingbird. The hummingbird, unfazed by the swift winds, sways back and forth on its high perch, keeping a watchful eye on a small group of flowers below. A few seconds later, and a second hummingbird silently flies in to feed on those same flowers. This chunky little bird is a male rufous hummingbird, and in case you were wondering, these birds will often use the bathroom while they're eating, like this one just did. Just remember that next time you lean in to smell the flowers. Hummingbirds are an excellent test subject for a new lens, and so far so good. We just need this hummingbird to move into some better light. There, that's better. A nice little spotlight on the bird's face, but we need to see this entire bird in better light like this. Ah, there we go. Now we can really see some of this tiny bird's amazing color. And the 200 to 600 seems to be performing just fine. But I really wanted to try this lens on some larger birds as well. Thankfully, Matt Klaskowski knew a quaint little spot in the mountains where we could find some larger birds. But the moon was already making a grand appearance over the mountains. Our birding adventure would have to wait until the following morning. 6 a.m. Sparks Lake, Oregon, a land of sleeping giants and glassy surfaces crawling with a mist that twists and turns along some unforeseen path. This is the perfect place to wander and explore. A small group of deer lazily graze among the dew-covered flowers. Another deer slowly navigates a narrow stone path. The water isn't deep, but it's ice cold. A pair of sandpipers watch the deer from a distance. Is this deer going to end up going for an early morning swim? Not today. The deer manages to cross without taking part in the polar plunge. It's easy to see why so many eager photographers choose to be at this location well before sunrise. It's breathtaking in every sense of the word, and as my early morning stroll leads me around a tree-lined bend, I spot one of those eager photographers who is busy composing a shot of his own. Surrounded by early morning mist, beautiful flowers, and treacherous lava rocks, Chris Orwig has no idea that I'm taking his picture. This is one of the beauties of a long telephoto lens, being able to capture images from a distance without the wildlife knowing. Another great thing about a telephoto lens is its ability to compress an entire scene into a smaller area, making a faraway background appear much closer to that very close foreground. But something isn't quite right with this shot. Chris's reflection is blocked by an old withered tree. Ah, the versatility of a telephoto zoom. I zoom in a little bit and I take a step to the left to remove that tree and add Chris's reflection. There we go. That's much better. The sun finally starts to make an appearance and it sheds some beautiful orange light on the surface of the misty water. This is my cue to join Matt on the other side of the lake where the sky is suddenly filled with hungry osprey. You really couldn't ask for a better situation. 
I'm surrounded by natural beauty, awesome people, and it isn't long until my favorite bird plunges feet first into the water below. All right, that's it. Sweet. This is the moment that me, Matt, Chris, and the osprey have been waiting for. And as the osprey falls out of the sky with its razor sharp talons open wide, the magic of photography grants us the ability to step back and take it all in. From the beautiful field of flowers to the layers of color stretching off into the horizon and back to that amazing bird who is just doing what it does in order to survive, even if it means plunging feet first into an icy cold lake below. So cool when they hit the water, they're actually going completely under and we got this really nice reflection of the splash underneath and above. And they just disappear completely. It's like fireworks, look at it. <laughs> but it's so cool. It's like it's like the phoenix rising from the ashes coming out of the water, but like you got the reflection almost all the way through as it's coming out. Wings, head, all of it. That's amazing. And look at the water behind them. That's awesome. With cameras aimed back at the sky, our osprey decides to dive once again. The osprey, determined to get a nice fish breakfast, locks onto some poor unsuspecting fish as it pulls its wings closer to its body in order to increase its already breakneck speed. Its razor sharp talons poised and ready as the bird inches closer to the inevitable impact with the cold water below. The osprey moves its legs forward, opens its talons, and the osprey crashes into the surface completely submerging itself and sending a huge plume of water into the air. Was this dive a success? No, it wasn't. But check out those wings. They're huge. And they have to be in order for this bird to break the surface tension of the water. I love how the bird appears to be hovering right on the surface there. How awesome. I shared this image on Instagram and someone commented on how much they enjoyed the layers in this image and they compared it to an actual landscape shot. There are these very obvious horizontal layers that start with a nice oil painting like reflection in the foreground. They move back to the area of rough water with that amazing bird. And then you have that dark shoreline. And finally, the rows of flowers in the back. And of course, I planned all of that. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm just kidding here. Accidental composition is always a huge bonus. As much as I would like to say these birds were solely here for our photography enjoyment, that's not the case. These birds are hungry, and when they come up without a fish, it can only mean one thing. Time to try again. It just so happens that their determination is a great asset to our photography. And when you have five osprey circling overhead, the chances of one of them getting a fish are really good. And like clockwork, one of these determined birds comes falling out of the sky again. Was this third attempt a success? You bet it was. This bird gets a nice plump fish for breakfast and wastes no time getting away from that cold lake water. The bird takes its well-deserved catch for a ride over that large open field of wildflowers. And immediately after that, another osprey dives into the water right next to this one. And this bird was also successful and it eagerly holds its catch with both sets of talons. It's not letting this fish go for anything. Meanwhile, a different osprey has decided that it's done for the morning and it perches on this old snag in front of the mountains. While all of this was happening, Chris Orwig was busy telling a different story. The story of two happy photographers in a breathtaking environment, capturing incredible wildlife moments, but most importantly, having a great time doing it. What an awesome experience at Sony Condo 3.0. Oh wow, I had such a good time what did you think? Let me know in the comment section below. And this video would not have happened if it wasn't for a lot of people. Sony, thank you so much for inviting me out to Condo 3.0. I had a great time, great experience in every way imaginable. And Matt, thank you so much for actually seeking me out, knowing that I would love the Osprey, picking me up at quarter till five and driving me like 45 minutes out to that lake. Without him, this video wouldn't have happened either. Um, go check out all of his stuff. I'm gonna put links to everything that he does down in the, the description below. And same with Chris Orwig for actually filming us while we were out there. That was so nice of him. And then sharing the footage with me so that I could make this video for all of you. I'm gonna put links to his stuff down in the description below. Make sure you go check that out as well. 
And I really, really loved this 200 to 600 lens so much so that I immediately ordered a copy when I got home. Um, it's probably gonna replace my 100 to 400 for everything that I do. I, I just like it in pretty much every sense of the word. It was a great experience all around. Um, and just so you know, this is my 112th video. That means I have 111 other videos that you can go watch. So make sure you go check those out too. And until next time, I'll see you later.